Stones Bitter Championship Trophy, the pot of silver at the end of 2,080 minutes of rugby league. To get their hands on it, Wigan needed just one point against St Helens at Knowsley Road this afternoon. Here's what happened with John Helm. Wigan could hardly have made a better start. Their Great Britain man Dennis Betts going over for the first score. They were playing without Kevin Iro, Sean Edwards, Andy Platt and Andy Gregory, but at least something for the Wigan fans to cheer about early on. But then, in an extraordinary instance, Ellery Hanley flattened and quick thinking by Paul Groves from the foot tap on the 25. He gives the ball to Les Burke, who scored some really spectacular tries this season. This rated alongside the best of them. A 70-yard gallop and a straightforward conversion for Paul Lachlan. St Helens led 6-4. The next try belonged to George Mann exclusively. The Kiwi prop made the running and he scored the try from a quick play the ball and it was 10-4. Back came Wigan though and their substitute, O'Donnell, put over a penalty to make it 10-6. Soon afterwards, however, for Lachlan restoring the advantage and at Nosley Road at half-time, 17,700 saw a scoreline of 12-6 to the Saints. St Helens starting the second half well and Roy Haggerty with a typical drop goal stretched the lead to 13-6 now it's for a really clever kick from Shane Cooper Man again involved, a clever pass from him too Haggerty taking it on and it's Quirk beating off Hampson's challenge in the corner St Helens really stretching their advantage and a towering kick from touchline by Paul Lachlan making it 19-6 and it was looking good for St Helens it looked even better moments later when Paul Groves and Jonathan Griffiths figured in the move. The ball whisked out to the right and Alan Hunt really doing well to get that ball down over the Wigan try line. And I think St Helens knew at this stage that victory was going to be theirs. It certainly turned out that way. They scored another spectacular try. Paul Lachlan unselfishly making the running and setting up a hat-trick on a plate for less work in the corner. Yet another marvellous conversion from touchline and at 29 points to six St Helens were home and dry. Wigan are never down of, of course and they kept going and in the closing moments Andy Goodway stormed his way over for a typical try to make it 29 points to 10 but even so the last score went to St Helens. Again Lachlan was involved, so was Paul Forber. Haggerty but the try scorer in the end was the substitute Mark Bailey he scored the try Paul Lachlan tacked on the goal and so Wigan did not get the point they wanted 35-10 so the championship is still open Wigan stay four points clear of Leeds who have two matches left and the race will go right to the end of those 2,080 minutes on Monday afternoon if Leeds win tonight. So, all eyes are on Headingley. It's Leeds against Featherstone, who are still fighting for first division survival. And if the visitors need any encouragement, they might try a quick glance in the home dressing room. The Leeds physio, Stuart Walker, has had a busy time since Tuesday night, when Central Park was no place for faint hearts or faint bodies. After that game against Wigan, just how much work did you have to put in to get everybody fit again for this match? Well, I haven't had a day off this week. I've been here morning, noon and night really. So, um, I have I've had to be very, very busy actually. And unfortunately, we have had the likes of Mike Kuiti and um, Gary Devoti who have progressed with treatment but not available for this evening's game. And hopefully they'll be fit for the game against Castleford on Monday. For Featherstone, it's been quite a week. A magnificent victory over Bradford, followed by selection for a Great Britain tour place out of the blue for Ian Smales. Bradford have to defend again, and they could be ragged. It could be a try for Featherstone, he's in! Ian Smales, the try scorer, under the sticks. 
Ian, congratulations. What a week. Two tries against Bradford Northern, selected for the Tour to New Zealand, and now here you are playing against Leeds. Yeah, well, it's a great week for me, but we've got to win tonight to ensure first division survival. We're one point clear at the moment, but there's other teams, and we can't rely on other teams all the time, so we've got to do it ourselves. Just to confirm Featherstone's task tonight, two points here would guarantee their first division survival, putting them out of reach of both Lee and Sheffield, who each have one match remaining. In an unchanged Featherstone team, half the pack have a special incentive tonight. Jeff Gration, Trevor Clark and Chris Burton are all former Leeds players, while Leeds will also remember Ian Smale scored two tries against them earlier in the season. For Leeds, injuries to Kuiti and Devorti mean Roy Powell moving up from sub and David Heron switching to loose forward. Cavill Hugh has recovered from an ankle injury, much to Leeds' surprise and delight. And at prop, David Young plays his first full game since leaving the Welsh International Rugby Union ranks, understandably a cause for a few nerves. Yeah, surprising enough, as you, as you said, I've been in a lot of uh, big arenas and um, I am pretty nervous today, yes. Do you think you're ready for it? I mean, after the few 18 games that you've had? I think I've had about um, between six and eight, um, 18 games. Obviously, the first few games I was, you know, lost really, but um, it's starting to find my feet a little bit now. And David Young makes his debut in a Leeds team tonight wearing white. The evening fine and dry but breezy, the crowd expectant. Your commentators David Watkins and John Hell. So contrary to some expectations, there is still everything to play for tonight. We all suspected that Featherstone would need a couple of points out of this encounter. But if Leeds can win, well the championship is still going to be boiling. Here's Derek Fox, another who's due for New Zealand. What a good start by Featherstone taking the ball and immediately there's a chance for Paul Newlove over on that far touch line. Terry Manning. It would certainly be a colossal boost to Featherstone's morale if they could get the first points. In these opening couple of minutes, Chris Burton. They'll go left with Clark, they'll come right with Fox and loose forward Fisher. Well, a perfect situation for a Derek Fox drop goal, and we saw a couple of those last week. Instead, he chips uh, inside, Clark keeps it. Gary Rose. And the Leeds line has held firm for four tackles. Two to come. What can Fox do this time? Along the line. A good tackle. What a good, solid tackle that one was by Rob Ackerman. On the last one now. Hoisted high, and not an easy one to take for Gary Schofield, but take it he does and in front of his line too. Promising start by Featherstone, David. Well, yes, they'll be on a high. They beat Bradford uh, last Sunday and uh, they'll be looking to do the same to Leeds the, this evening. Leeds, of course, disappointed at losing at, uh, at Wigan, but nonetheless, they're out tonight to show the fans just what they can do. And there's David Young for the first time, bulldozing his way over the 25. And that was a good start for him. It's always difficult as the... First penalty, I think, is going to be awarded here. The touch judge is on. There's Gary Rose. Uh, it's always difficult, isn't it, for a prop forward to come out in rugby union, perhaps more so than a three-quarter. Absolutely. One of the differences is he's got to hang on to the ball. The second thing is he'll be moving around with the ball in his hands far more than he would in rugby union. And it's so important that when you make ground, you can also get rid of the ball to any support. Referee tonight... We look there at uh, Colin Maskell, Leeds hooker. The referee is David Campbell from St Helens. Oh, good run on the burst from Paul Dixon. Storming work from Dixon. What a good plunge that was by the foot forward. More akin to his second row days. Of Huddersfield in Halifax, he's moved up this season. And Leeds move up, swinging the ball wide to Ackerman. There's a gap here, and Ackerman tries to exploit it. No. Ford, this is where Phil Ford comes dancing into it. Schofield. It's an awkward one again. And there will be an offside decision here. Both Fawcett and Gibson had strayed. And David Campbell, the referee.
Oh, what a lovely ball from Grace to Rose, and Rose tries to get around delay in his tackle. What a terrific pass that was. That was a superbly contrived move, and that's really what Featherston are good at. It's surprising that this side struggle every year in the, for the same reasons they don't do well enough mid-season. in harness as there have been so many many times well Grayson's had a very good start already here and he's signed a new one year contract for Featherstone Rovers this week so he'll be playing next year at the age of 42 that bounced fortuitously into Ackerman's hands and that was unlucky for Featherstone so now Roy Powell Oh, lovely, slipping the pass delightfully to Delaney. It keeps going as well. Finally falls to the tackle from Smiles. And the sun just beginning to dip here at Headingley. As Maskell goes, and Maskell might... Well, I was going to say might go all the way, but it needed a good tackle from Chris Bibb to halt him in full flight. And Leeds have had some slow starts in matches this season, have made a strong start here. Obviously, don't want to be caught napping in the early stages by a Featherston side, which came on strongly against Bradford at the weekend. David Heron passes on to Schofield, Schofield Ackerman. Now Bentley, first time he's had the ball in his hands, but John Bentley knows the way to the try line. Oh, and Roy Powell has given it back to him, and Bentley snaps up that loose ball. And it was an offering he was not going to turn down, and we've seen that shot so many times in recent weeks. John Bentley over the try line, takes the hand slap. He started it all and he finished it. Well, they put the pressure on this Featherston side already and their intention is obvious. They're starting to play some lovely football leads. The ball is being moved out. This comes back inside, takes the defence with him. But there's always the ability to move the ball when the man is being tackled. A hallmark recently of Leeds' performances. And Bentley, who's playing with this new air of confidence now, half sells the dummy. Powell, watch how they fix the low ball back up. Absolutely foxes the defence completely and runs in unopposed. He really has become extremely popular here with the Leeds fans, as is this man Maskell. And the hooker, who completed a century of goals at Wigan on Tuesday, tries to add two more points in a very productive season. And he does, it's 6-0. Well, this Leeds try comes about because of Bentley's newfound confidence and his ability now to get involved in the game at all times. He sets up Powell here with a charging run, although the ball goes to the floor, he picks it up, who drinks the defence completely and runs over unopposed. Rose. Ellis denying, of course, that a win tonight would make them absolutely certain of playing in the first division again next season. And they might just stretch leads here as Rose carries the fight once more midway inside that 25. And a penalty awarded against David Young. Aaron wanted to know why. But Gary Rose felt the full brunt of David Young's weight then. And I think he followed through, perhaps. Well, there was some doubt. I didn't think that it was a penalty here because he takes the tackle and, I mean, there doesn't seem anything wrong with that. There was no doubt at all about it. He lost the ball and he had all the rights in the world to push it away. It should be a simple one enough for Derek Fox. It can hardly be straighter. Featherston's first points from the boot of Derek Fox. Undeservedly, because there's no doubt at all about it, Derek Fox is one of the best scrum halves in the game of rugby league. His distributorship to play outside half to Derek Fox must be absolutely magnificent, because he does everything right. His deliverance of the pass, he shimmies at the back of the scrum, he links up with his back row forwards. Delaney, 
He's again in for Cruikshank and gets the ball away for Cavill Hugh, who is an extremely dangerous customer when he gets a sniff of the try line. Schofield. Oh, Leeds have got a lot of options here, but oh, there's a knock on. That's unfortunate because they look to be well in control of the situation near the try line and should have done better with that. One wonders now because Featherson have had so much of the play, they've played a lot of good football, but they haven't scored points. Now it'll be interesting to see who wins this scrum, and if Leeds can score, it could knock the stuffing out of Featherson for all their efforts. And Featherstone's form this season really a bit like the Curate's egg. They had a very dodgy spell early season, but they've come right back away from Post Office Road in recent weeks. through there for Smiles with Dixon and Hugh right in his line of sight Fox tries again this time he brings Rose on and a penalty again awarded against Leeds by referee Campbell and they look mystified by the decision as the ball came away after the tackle had been made and Gary Schofield seeking an explanation from Mr Campbell that's twice that's happened in the last few minutes I think I'd want an explanation there as well because I couldn't see anything wrong with that at all that's two occasions the referee definitely didn't know what was happening he looked to the touch judge and he momentarily didn't know what to do and then suddenly a penalty appears and gives Featherston possession the crowd giving the rare slow hand clap over there how often you get that in rugby league and they must wonder what's going on too on that bench I think at the moment but whatever happens, it's Featherston on the attack and Gratian leading the offensive once more with Burton. Fox then must watch him at this sort of a distance and Gratian, he'll still try and slip the pass away. He does take some stopping, even at 41. Clark! Goodness me, they just got his big toe and it was a good job they did and Trevor Clark tries again and he's in! Trevor Clark, full credit to him! What a good hooker's try that was! Clark knew the way to the line, 11 tries for him this season and it was all of his own making. Well Featherstone have had a lot of possession and Clark comes down the middle of the field but look, the defence hasn't regrouped, he can see that, takes the tap to himself and before anybody can stop him he's over for a try. So Trevor Clark, one time leads Booker, now Featherstone brings the scores level and Derek Fox should put the Rovers ahead. He does. Featherston take the lead for the first time on the night by eight points to six. But all credit to Trevor Clark for burrowing his way in. And that's a knock on by New Love. Just when they didn't need it. And uh, he knows. Players know only too well, they don't need to be told. They certainly do. It's amazing, actually, because Leeds are, no, uh, are noted for being slow starters, but in fairness to them, Featherstone have had a lot of possession in this first half. They certainly have, but this, this Leeds now. Ackerman missed out Schofield. There's been so much talk about Wigan being tired, but we've got to remember, of course, that Leeds must be pretty jaded as well in some ways after that mammoth of a match at... Uh, Wigan on Tuesday Gibson, Delaney they're looking for a spark now then can Hugh provide it David Ward said though that the attitude has been absolutely excellent since Tuesday night when they could have been down again the ball is lost in the tackle and the referee awards and leads a penalty this time it's all very messy at the moment in situations like that. Well, that's definitely a tit for tat. I don't care what anybody else says. There's no doubt in about that at all. 
and that is one of the things that caused a lot of frustration. I saw nothing wrong with the first incident, and there certainly was nothing wrong with that to justify a penalty for Leeds. And certainly Colin Maskell should be able to put Leeds back at 8-8. Eight -eight. Scores a level again. and uh, there is Stuart Walker leaning forward wondering if he's going to have to be out on the pitch treating anybody before long Maskell oh good ball and here's from running from Paul Dixon very very strong runner and he's put his stamp on the game there and a surging run Bentley farms it out and Again, Featherstone looked to hold on in these closing moments of the half. Two minutes of the half remain as Schofield shipped it out to Delaney. Heron tries to turn back inside. The ball is for Powell. Powell's pass is intercepted. And can he go the whole length of the field? Well, it's a loose forward on his way. Four of them chase him. And Ledalin, Fawcett got back. One or two other players on the field who would have gone the whole distance. Here's one of them, Manning. And uh, Fisher very, very tired after that gallop. Clark. He's got the Featherstone try. And Newler. Now the Newler's got a chance here as he comes inside. Newler's a great finisher. 15 yards out, and it's now Featherstone who turned the pressure on Leeds. With Fox. And Smiles, and Smiles has one man to beat and looks for the support, and Rose couldn't hold it. The ball is knocked back, and Featherston can continue. They still can. It's still going back. Here's Jeff Gration now. Gets the ball away to Rose. Rose is six or seven yards out. That's well for leather now, Featherston. And Leeds hanging on. Chris Bibb. They've only 30 seconds left in which to conjure up a try. Rose, Fox, he's gone for the little chip through and it's gone to ground in a Leeds pair of hands. Well, you seriously have to wonder why Featherston are in such a precarious position because they've played some marvellous football tonight. Their backing up has been superb. They've never been afraid to open the game up and they've really taken the game to Leeds here this evening. In fact, David, they rarely let us down on scrum down. Featherston have given some very polished performances on the programme. He says that was a knock-on, and that does surprise me. Chris Burton seemed to hold on to that ball to me. Well, he has made one or two uh, wonderful decisions tonight, and it, it does cause a lot of discussion, and it will, no doubt, at half-time with the card. So here we are then at Headingley. Leeds 8, Featherston Rovers 8. Certainly everything to play for in the second half. A try apiece, though. Players giving plenty of efforts but just one try for Leeds from John Bentley and a couple of Colin Maskell goals one try to Trevor Clark for Featherston and a couple of Derek Fox goals all square then join us for the second half after the break welcome back to Headingley Leeds 8 Featherston Rovers 8 it really couldn't be better set up for the second half here and I'm sure that Peter Fox has been delighted with the way his side has come out and attacked Leeds here tonight. Let's hear from him now, he's on the touchline with Nick. Peter, from the possession you've had, you might be in a better position than Nate really. Yes, we could have been, but we had a bit of bad luck on the line, the ball's going astray once or twice, and their attacking's been uh, desperate once or twice, but they've got the bounce of the ball, and they've had the advantage of the penalties just now, so we're, uh, we're hoping to do a little bit better this half, put some more pressure on them. What have you said the lads at half-time? But we've just got to keep on playing the way we're getting and we've got to get a change of look. They've had all the looks so far, we've had, we haven't got any. Thanks very much indeed, we're in the way in the second half. Here's John. Well, I'm not going to disagree with that, and Alan Banks has given a rousing start to the half with a very good run indeed for Featherston. Burton. So in the first half, Leeds took the scrum 7-4 and Colin Maskell did win one against the head. Penalties, Leeds conceding three more than Featherston and the errors, just one more. So Smales 
kicks it high. He's not a bad kicker either, isn't Smales? And he's gone to collect his own kick. And it bounces for Phil Ford. And here goes Ford. Off his left foot, off his right foot, down the middle. Still Ford. That's when he's at his best, and that's why Malcolm really picked him as a full-back rather than a winger. Gibson looking to find a way down the middle and Carl Gibson can shift Fox can't stop him, still Gibson lovely ball inside and Gary Schofield canters in for the score that's a spectacular try for Leeds and for Gary Schofield wonderful try they really all credit in the first instance there to Carl Gibson Gary Schofield collects number 19 but it was Carl Gibson who set it all up and Featherston looked crestfallen. Well, Leeds always look to provide a little magic and uh, Gibson breaks down the middle now. Usually dependable Fox misses the tackle on Gibson and who should be there but Gary Schofield. And when he's in full flight, there's none better than him to score tries. Yes, that was a super try and that have been scored earlier in the season it might well have been in the try of the season competition and Colin Masker we understand is about to be substituted but they'll give him time to pop over the goal two points from the boot of Maskell and now he can retire for the time being anyway he's not seen his number being lifted it's 14-8 and now he gets the message Richard Gunn will replace him and here comes Richard Gunn well just watch Gibson he comes through the middle of the field he breaks up the defence no one can stop him when he runs like this even Derek Fox who's usually a dependable tackler but as soon as he looks to his right Schofield is there and he sprints away leaving the defence behind him Fox to Sharp. Gary Rose. Last tackle though. Featherston haven't had as much of the ball in this half and they've not been able to make as much ground as they did in the first but they'll look to the boot of Fox. Phil Ford. That's his pass away for Bentley. We always look to see Bentley make long surging runs now, but this time he's switched it away and delayed it to Fawcett. Fawcett stretches those legs of his. Gibson comes in field. Really good play from Leeds again. They covered a good 50 yards then in a matter of seconds. And it was exciting to watch, and so is this. Schofield turns his pass beautifully, and Gunn makes a terrific tilt for the line. So uh, puts the ball down in the tackle. And they look what's on there they're going to be try scorers well that was a superb move but that was a brilliant tackle then by Bibb which took man and ball and give them back the possession just watch this they've sweeping movement they come right across the field with this ball they really are on song look at that for a time pass Richard Gunn then takes it down the middle and look at that tackle of Bibbs it's superb took him out of the game completely and give Featherston the ball back and they still have it Featherston are still trailing 14-8. Fox once more will kick and he'll kick straight down the middle of the field. So Phil Ford has to go back before collecting. Whoops, through his legs. And off he goes. Still Bentley, how did he get away from that and get the pass in? Again it's supporting Schofield. Well 
Bentley runs with such good purpose. Heron, clever play. Heron found a gap somehow there. Strode, he waited for Dixon to support. Terrific football from David Heron. Well, he's been around the rugby league scene a year or two, but he's still as able as ever. And Gunn has found a gap, and he's going to score a try. Richard Gunn sears his way over. He's not scored a try since the early weeks of the season. And he scored against Salford and Warrington. There's a bit of bother in here. That's a shame because Gunn's try was all we ought to have been watching. But unfortunately, we've got a real huddle. We've, we've got an unscheduled scrum. It's easy to forget a try's been scored. Well, Leeds are now making this Featherston defence toil. They can't catch them. Gun really side spots everybody and comes down the middle with just nobody there. And in the background was the start of the unsavoury movement. Well, of all people to be pulled out, it's Jeff Gratian and Gary Schofield. And yellow cards for both. So Schofield was preparing to kick at goal. He's got a bloody nose. Gratian's got a bloody mouth. And uh, the pair of them have a few words to say about it all and well they'll be discussing it in the bar afterwards I'm sure so the third choice kicker is going to be Phil Ford well it's a rare opportunity for Phil Ford he's not kicked many in his career he's kicked one or two actually there's one for the collection. The crowd liked it. He liked it. And it's 20 points to eight. Well, really, they've stretched. They've moved it both sides of the field. Gun just tied steps past one man. And look, the defence is caught completely. There's no one there at all. He goes right down the middle to go over under the force. Featherston have brought on Paul Hughes for Ian Smales. And the ball has come out on the lead side from that scrum. It looks as though it's going to be hit by Featherston. It came out for Leeds and now Phil Ford. Can't step around Bibb. Or Sharp. Cavill Hugh, Powell, and they really are stretching Featherston now. Pedersen's defence is looking a little groggy. And a further lead try, I think, would finish them. And they're moving it around with Delaney. He just stopped himself giving out a pass which could have been intercepted then. Gun acting half back. Hugh, a regular try scorer in recent matches. Last tackle. I think Phil Ford might fancy a drop goal. Here we go. He is as well. And it's through. Well. He's kicked a goal, he's dropped the goal, and it's all going Phil Ford's way and leads his way. 21 8. I'm sure there's a lot of discussion going on down on the benches. Nick's in close proximity. Well, the news at the moment is that Gary Lord has come on for Leeds in place of uh, David Young, who's made his debut. That's the most recent news. Gary Lord, in fact, was planning to come on for Cavill Hugh a few moments ago. And they checked with Cavill Hugh, they said, is your ankle OK? And remarkably, that ankle that they were so worried about before start is still holding up. We've also been in touch with the match officials and their interpretation of the incident that led to the sin binning of the two players was that there was obstruction by Jeff Grayson as Schofield came through. And there was some retaliation of the kick by Schofield. So both of them ending up with 10 minutes to cool off. Thank you, Nick. Fawcett typically came on a strong run through the middle. Now goes Dixon on one. Aaron, the ball fizzing through the hands at the moment, and Ackerman is in a terrific running rare food here. Taken out, though, once more, and 
wish Vivers tackled really well at fullback for Featherston today. Oh, he's really coming back on form. He faded away a little bit. At the end of last season, he was a player to be reckoned with by any stretch of imagination, and he certainly is in turning in some sterling performances of late. This again is Leeds again, now they're on the rampage, they're really moving the ball out. Ackerman decides to tuck it under his arm and really go for it. Bentley comes inside him, he can't get it to him, but look, another textbook tackle. Fox the longer one this time, and Fisher can't hold those. And it'll be Tim Sharp who goes off. Schofu pouncing up and down, desperate to get in to the action again. He's got about another three minutes to wait yet. Just can't wait. And the new Featherston substitute, Martin Pearson, who had a couple of first team outings last season, was sub last Sunday against Bradford without getting on. Nice move here, a really good play. If Gibson holds on, he might make it all the way. No, good tackling. Heron's had a good game at loose forward. He's been involved in most of the best Leeds moves, and here's another good Leeds move. And they will surely get a try here if the passing is good. And John Bentley, can they resist him? Yes, they can. He flips the ball back. Well, again, they looked as though they were going to register. But David Heron's performance once more tonight, you know, belying his age. Well, he's a marvellous player. He's uh, played loose forward. He was very effective as a standoff half. Just watch the way he passes. He really does really pass well, he draws the man properly and lets it out. Now Ford sees a chance here, Bentley determined to get over in the corner to add to his tries, but yet again, it's a powerful Featherston defence. Well, Gary Schofield said to Jeff Grace in a second, oh, come on, let's get back on there. I think they're missing it, they both love their rugby league and that was nice to see. I'm sure they've uh, patched up their differences. Manning again, he's a really good runner is Manning, he's had a very good match for Featherston and he puts the ball inside for Newlove as well, Newlove continues and Newlove goes for that corner and there must be a Featherston try, in the corner it's Alan Pax, super try for Featherston Rovers, it really is and a lot to admire there, first of all in the way Terry Manning took it on, it's Pax's fifth try but Manning and Newlove and Banks at the end of it, really producing a scintillating score for Featherston Rovers. Well, that's one in the eye for me as a critic, because I said they put it all together, but they haven't scored points. But this is a superb movement. Newlove created by running across the field here, drawing the defence. The defence are chasing him all the time. Gives Banks the opportunity to go on the outside. And uh, little Derek Fox, way out there, has to try and convert. Not the easiest of tasks, we have seen Paul Lachlan kick a few from touch today and Fox kicks one just every bit as good. Tremendous effort from the little scrum half and it's 21-14. Well, you won't see many better tries than this. And I think we should all watch just what happens. It's drawing of the pass. New left seeing that it was way was blocked going straight ahead. He goes across and causes confusion to the Leeds defence. Now, the Leeds defence are all chasing him, but the ball travels faster than the man, and they've got wise enough to keep it moving to banks. There is Gary Schofield back on. So is Jeff Gratian. Featherston are coming, looking once more. They've certainly not packed it in, have they? Rose takes it on. And whatever you all say about Featherston Rose, you have to add that they have grit and determination and no Featherston side ever lies down. So many teams might have done here at Leeds at 21-8. And gracian has got another ball away for Clark and he's got a couple of men alongside him. Trevor Clark, he scored one tonight, throws it back at the substitute, Pearson, no more than a couple of yards out, can't quite make it on the last tackle and that would have been another spectacular score Manning tries to get there Pearson tries to get there and in the end Ford and Delaney managed to deny them but only Justin Featherston are right back in it well you say grit and determination but they really have come back in they really were left for dead 
but watch the way now they come again Grayson yet again how he stands in the tackle good backing up by Trevor Clark now he's always looking for a man on the outside as soon as the man comes he'll slip the ball to him and it was just unfortunate there was nowhere else really to go and the defence blocked it all off and they're playing like a team fighting for its lives Manning comes around the other way now he gets the pass into Davis Richard Davis 25 just inside it and all of a sudden it's Leeds who are holding on again and that's what makes rugby league such a fascinating game and Fox once more the pass is here for Fisher Fisher just couldn't squeeze a pass away Fox once more they look to him so much Jeff Grayson lobs the ball out and Mueller I don't think he's made it has he he was just taken into touch Paul Newlove Jeff Gratian's pass and if Newell has scored there Feniston were certainly back in the hunt well they certainly aren't being intimidated by this lead side because they really are Gratian again comes into that lobs over the ball now let's just watch this no the flag had gone down no try so they sit quietly for the moment uh, I think they'd have been on their feet if Newell had got in for that score And he's got the support as well. And this could be a crown and a clinching try for Leeds. And it must surely be. Over in that left-hand corner is Carl Gibson's try. Gibson, who made Schofield's try at the start of the second half, has finished it all off. And the man who's going to be touring with Great Britain this summer has his 12th try of the season. And what he's really deserved. Well, you always had to worry about this. They put so much into attack themselves, Featherstone, that no doubt at all about it, they were caught here. Bibb went into tackle, he made his tackle count, but it really was the sleight of hand of all the players. Schofield yet again, Gibson, John Bentley rather, then Gibson on his outside, and look at that, makes it all look so easy. Gary Schofield is back on. Here's Schofield's attempt to convert, and it's failed, but it won't matter. It's 25 points to 14, and Leeds know the job is done. Well, they've caught the defence, they put so much into attack themselves, but now they've, they've been caught out themselves. Look, at Bibb brings him down, but the ball goes beautifully out of from one hand to another, and this Leeds side really do, when they're on song, do really look good. Oh, through the gap goes Gunn and gets the pass in too. Right on halfway though as we come to the last tackle. It might even be the last tackle of the night. A crowd of over 12,000 keeping up the terrific uh, attendances that have been here all season at Headingley. And I think that's the first handover we've had all evening. But with all credit to both sides, there was so much depending on the game, but they've both played to their utmost. They really have. It's been a brave performance, uh, not to take pity on them, but it has been a brave performance by Featherstone. Each and every one of them has served their part well. Some have obviously played better than others, but they really have taken the game to Leeds, and really it's that taking of the game to Leeds which has cost them the game because they left themselves weak in defence at the back on one or two occasions. And they're still trying here at Featherstone right up to the final hooter it would be such a shame if they did go down they have to hope now that Lee do get beaten by Wigan on uh, Monday Leeds are hoping for exactly the reverse of course as they go to Castleford for the final match of the season Dixon finishing the game as strongly as he started it that's it so the championship season rolls on to Easter Monday it's all down now to the final games when Leeds go to Kettleford and when Wigan play Lee. And Gary Schofield having to be helped off, that's not a happy sight for Leeds in this closing moment. They have to win of course at Kettleford and hope that Wigan suffer a shock defeat at the hands of Lee. But tonight they've been too good for Featherstone with tries from Bentley and Schofield, from Gunn and Gibson along with three masculine goals and a couple of drop goals from 
a one from Phil Ford and a goal as well from him against the Clark and Backstrice for Featherstone and three goals from Derek Clark. So, the man of the match, David Watkins. Well, the Stones' better man of the match this evening goes to Paul Dixon. Uh, he's given an industrious display. His tackling and commitment have served Leeds well this evening. He is a most respected opponent. Paul, it was a difficult game on Tuesday night and that was hard. How difficult was to lift yourselves again tonight against the Featherstone side who were looking for their own survival? It was very hard. They came out fighting and we had his work cut out. We were all a bit jaded from Tuesday night. We came away with two points, which is the main thing, and a secure second place. Well, it's all to play for now uh, against Castlewood and uh, hoping that uh, Wigan will go down as well. So you should, still could do it. Yeah, we'll just take one game at a time. We'll just go win at Castlewood and then see what happens at, over the other side of the border. Well, congratulations and well done. Thanks very much. Whatever happens on Monday, it's been a terrific season here at Headingley, hasn't it? It does indeed. We've all enjoyed each other's company. We're all a team, the boys and the coaching staff. And uh, at the end of the day, there's a lot to be played for it with the Premiership. So hopefully we can come out uh, with some reward at the end of the season. Yeah, it's been a great season no matter what, hasn't it? It has indeed, and as you can see with the support tonight, the 12,000 spectators, they've appreciated the, uh, the rugby we played this season, and hopefully now, uh, if not the Championship, then on to Old Trafford to, uh, to finish the season off. Well, Peter, the team's status in the game is still in the balance. You've still got to hope for something on Monday and hope that we can beat Lee, but on that performance, you must be, you're a first division side. No question about it, we competed with the best sides in the league, John, and... Uh... We've just lost them with the bounce of the ball or refereeing decisions or that little bit of luck that you need and we've not quite had that and it's proven again tonight. We had them reeling at times and uh, just didn't have the luck and it seems that all the decisions seem to go against us or the luck goes against us. One try in particular just after half time that took them away from us was the referee lost his balance, turned, nearly fell over himself and he's back to their place and they passed a the forward pass and scored a try. Now then, when those things happen, it's, I call that bad luck to say the least. The scrum down statistics reflect what an even contest it was. Leeds shaded the scrums 10 to 8 and took both that went against the head. The penalty count finished level. Leeds didn't concede a single one in the second half. But a relatively high number of handling errors, just two more by Leeds, reflecting some adventurous play. Well, now the other headlines. Bradford Northern's 12 men hold on to beat Wakefield with a last minute drop goal, despite Glenn Barraclough sending off for elbowing Mark Conway. Elsewhere, John Devereux's try seals a witness win at Warrington. John Woods claims 22 points as Rochdale overwhelmed Trafford. The day's full results from the Stones Better Championship. Bradford Northern 19, Wakefield 18. Leeds 25, Featherstone 14. St Helens 35, Wigan 10. Warrington 10, Witness 22. So the title race goes down to the wire. Leeds could yet catch Wigan if they win at Castleford and Wigan lose at home to Lee. Sounds unlikely, but don't forget Tyson against Douglas, Bristol Palace against Liverpool, Mr Frisk, who knows? St Helens will definitely be third. At the bottom, Featherstone have finished their season. Lee and Sheffield could each overtake them by gaining a point from their final match. Sheffield play Hull at Bramall Lane on Sunday. Division 2, Fulham 38, Chorley 10. Huddersfield 15, Halifax 28. Hinkley 13, Bramley 70. Rochdale 70, Trafford 28. Rydale York 8, Hulkingston Rovers 17. Swinton 15, Oldham 12. Whitehaven 17, Workington 4. The Hulkingston Rovers will clinch the title if they beat Hunslet at Craven Park on Monday. Oldham's defeat at Swinton means they'd have to beat Rochdale by 29 points to steal second place from them. And these eight will be in the Premiership. If you've entered our try of the season competition, we'll have the results on Monday when we'll be at Central Park for Wigan against Lee. We'll also have cameras at Castleford versus Leeds. The championship climax on Scrum Down on Monday at 10.45. Don't miss it. With 80 minutes left, they're still running for home. Good night. I've been to the places in town where the faces hang round just to stare at each other
can.